The iPhone 6s is undoubtedly an upgrade over the iPhone 6. It's faster, it has better cameras, and an all new 3D touch display. The question is though, is it worth it? So what's good guys, Jonathan here, this is the iPhone 6, and this is the 6S. At first glance, there really isn't much of a difference between the two, which is expected to be an S upgrade, but looking a little closer, there are some subtle changes. The obvious change is the addition of a new rose gold color, and unlike most iPhone upgrades where the phone is thinner and lighter, the iPhone 6S is actually slightly thicker and heavier than the iPhone 6. There's a 0.2 millimeter bump in thickness, which really isn't significant, but as far as weight goes, that is definitely noticeable, with the iPhone 6S coming in at 14 grams heavier, with a lower case G. Now, as much as that most likely burn Johnny I've sold, the reason the iPhone 6S is heavier is mainly due in part to the 3D touch display. There's also a stronger 7000 series aluminum on the iPhone 6S, which levels up its durability, and of course, an S on the back, which denotes that it is unquestionably an S model. Now, jumping back in time for a second, back to 2009 when Apple dropped the 3GS, per Phil Schiller, the S stood for speed. The 4S marked the debut of Siri, or alternatively, for Steve by fans, and while the S and the 5S was never officially addressed, there was speculation that it stood for scan or even security with the inclusion of Touch ID. Fast forward to the iPhone 6S, and again, while there was no official acknowledgement of the S, I'd say speed is pretty fitting with this one. On paper, you really wouldn't expect a huge difference with the A9 chip on the 6S still being dual core, but there's actually a pretty significant difference between it and the A8. And on top of the speed bump, there's also now two gigabytes of RAM. In Geekbench 3, on the single core side of things, the iPhone 6 dished out a score of 1617, whereas the iPhone 6S jumped up to a score of 2500. As far as multi-core scores go, we're looking at 2913 on the iPhone 6 and 4381 on the 6S. Now as far as graphics performance goes, running GFX Bench, the iPhone 6 pumped out 27 frames per second, whereas the iPhone 6S nearly doubled that with 51 frames per second. So yeah, numbers are cool, but what does it actually mean in real world performance? What I did was take the exact same 1 minute 1080p project in iMovie and export them on each phone. The iPhone 6 exported the project in 53 seconds, and the iPhone 6S did the exact same thing in 35 seconds, which is pretty impressive. 18 seconds might not seem like a big difference, but multiplied over time or a bigger project, that's huge. Staying on track with speed, Touch ID is crazy fast on the 6S. Not to say that Touch ID was necessarily slow on the 6, but you can literally press the home button and that'll unlock the screen on the 6S. Now with the past few iPhone upgrades, the camera had been locked at 8 megapixels, but with the iPhone 6S, we finally see a jump up to 12 megapixels. So with the extra megapixels, you're gonna get obviously more resolution and more detail, but I wouldn't say this by itself is solely a reason to upgrade from the 6. What may persuade you though, if you love them pixels, is the iPhone 6S now shoots 4K video. So if you haven't already, make sure you click the 4K button to watch this video in its full resolution. And I know it might be hard to see any difference if you're not watching on a 4K monitor, but to put things into scale, these are the actual amount of pixels in a 1080p video file compared to 4K on the iPhone 6S. Touching real quick on the front-facing camera for a second, the 6S is a pretty solid upgrade with a jump to 5 megapixels compared to 1.2 on the 6. What was surprisingly useful though on the 6S is what Apple calls Retina Flash. It's a lame name, but the 6S selfie game is strong. There's also live photos, but that's really just a glorified short video, and it might sound cool, but it's really just a gimmick at this point. Now lastly, and what is probably the biggest difference between the 6S and the 6, is the implementation of 3D Touch. Now this is extremely hard to explain if you haven't experienced this in person, but what it is, is a pressure sensitive display that reacts by how hard you press. Now Apple comes up with some pretty ridiculous names, but these two are up there. Peak and pop are one of the ways you use 3D Touch. So for example, if you're an email, you could peak to get a preview or pop to fully open it up. This also applies to app shortcuts, and let me be clear, you are not long pressing, you are physically putting pressure on the screen, and that will grant you access to various shortcuts within that app. Now is this useful? Yes. Is it a game changer? Absolutely not. There's a very limited amount of apps that take advantage of it right now, and honestly, by the time there's a healthy amount that do, the iPhone 7 will probably be out. So at the end of the day, I would not call this a must-have upgrade. Obviously, if you're that guy or that girl that upgrades every single year, you will more than likely really enjoy the iPhone 6S. If you're coming from anything prior than the iPhone 6, then this is a big upgrade, and I would definitely recommend you jump up to this. Now for those curious, those fancy pants graphics were courtesy of video blocks who specialize in stock footage, motion templates, and After Effects templates. On top of that, they also have a marketplace. So you guys that shoot video, maybe some crispy iPhone 6S goodness, can submit your footage to be sold as stock footage and make 100% of the cash. You guys can check it out for free for seven days and the details are linked down below. So aside from that, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to go Walt Mossberg on that like button. Peek it, pop it, just don't force touch it. And if you wanna see how the iPhone 6S stacks up
up against the original iPhone, check out my buddy Austin Guns Evans' comparison, which you can click right here.